Ever wondered why Ross keeps yelling Payback! Payback! in this iconic friend scene and what it means? In this video, we'll break down this hilarious scene where Ross, Chandler, and Rachel try to move Ross's new couch up the stairs. Keep watching to see if they succeed and learn some essential English phrases along the way. First, we'll watch part of the clip with subtitles. <clears throat> I brought reinforcements. Oh, great. What, you brought Joey? Well, I brought the next best thing. <laughs> Yeah. Chandler, you brought Chandler? The next best thing would be Monica. You know, I wouldn't be offended, but Monica is freakishly strong, so... Look, I, I drew a sketch of how we're gonna do it, okay, Rach? That's you. That's the couch. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh what's, what's that? Oh, that's me. Wow. <laughs> Certainly think a lot of yourself. <laughs> Oh, that's that's my arm. <laughs> oh, I see. I thought you just really, really liked your new couch. <laughs> you know, just just follow my lead. Okay. Come on, Charlie. Oh. Ah. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. Ready? Yeah. Turn. Okay. Turn. Next, we'll break down the video and learn key vocabulary. I brought reinforcements. Oh, great. What, you brought Joey? Reinforcements refers to the additional support or people brought in, which in this case, Ross thinks it's Joey that's going to help with the sofa. But it can also mean extra supplies or resources you may need in other situations. Like, if you don't have any more snacks at a party, you can go get more and say, I brought reinforcements. Remember that brought is the past tense of bring, which means to carry or take something or someone to a particular place. Like, I brought wine. So here, when Rachel says, I brought reinforcements, she means that she brought additional help or support to deal with this situation. But we later see that Ross doesn't seem to think Chandler actually is a reinforcement. Well, I brought the next best thing. <laughs> so when someone says the next best thing, they're talking about an alternative option that is almost as good as the ideal choice. In this context, next means following in order, and best refers to something being the most excellent or desirable. It's a way of expressing that although the situation isn't perfect, it's still pretty good. For example, let's say your favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry, and your second favorite is chocolate. So chocolate ice cream is the next best thing. Remember that using idiomatic expressions like the next best thing can make your English sound more natural and engaging. So definitely try to use them in your conversations. So in this scene, the best person for the job would be Joey, but he was unavailable. So Rachel brought the next best thing. Okay. <laughs> Chandler, you brought Chandler? The next best thing would be Monica. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be offended, but Monica is freakishly strong. So. When someone is offended, it means feeling upset or annoyed because of something someone said or did that seems unfair or disrespectful. In this case, Chandler is suggesting that if Ross was talking about someone else, he might be upset about Ross's judgment. But he isn't because he knows Monica's strength is freakishly strong. Freakishly is an informal way of emphasizing something, like saying very or extremely. In this case, Chandler uses this word to refer to Monica's strength being exceptional. Freakishly usually refers to something that is surprising or unusual. For example, he's freakishly tall means that he is much taller than average. In English, we often use exaggeration to make a point or to be funny. In this case, freakishly strong is an exaggeration that emphasizes how strong Monica is. And it's also used for comedic effect. So according to Ross, the best thing would be Joey and the next best thing would actually be Monica, not Chandler. I, I drew a sketch of how we're gonna do it, okay? Rach, that's you, that's the couch. Mm -hmm. A sketch is a simple, quick drawing. In this clip, Ross is excitedly sharing that he's quickly made a drawing to show his plan or idea to move the couch. Sketch can also be a verb meaning to make a rough drawing of. For instance, I usually sketch some trees when I talk on the phone. When someone says how we're gonna do it, 
They mean how they will complete a task or achieve a goal. To make it more casual and friendly, Ross uses the informal word gonna instead of going to. So the overall sentence implies that Ross has a quick drawing of his plan and wants to share it with Ross and Chandler so they get ready to move that couch. What's that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Certainly think a lot of yourself. <laughs> You certainly think a lot of yourself is a playful way of saying that someone has a high opinion of themselves or is being arrogant. The key words here are think a lot of yourself, which means to have high self-esteem or to be self-confident. This can be positive, but in this case, it's used to tease someone about being too proud of themselves. Just be careful when using this phrase yourself, as the tone of your voice and the context will determine whether it's a joke or a criticism. In this scene, Rachel is pointing out how Ross sketched himself as a joke, referring to what happens to a guy when he really likes something or gets really excited, if you know what I mean. Oh, I see. I thought you just really, really liked your new couch. <laughs> Here, Chandler is jokingly suggesting that Ross has a strong liking or attachment to his new couch. I thought you just really, really liked your new couch uses a bit of exaggeration with the repetition of really to emphasize how much Ross likes his couch. It's common to repeat intensifiers in spoken English like very, very and so, so. For instance, this cake is so, so good or I like him very, very much. Or even, YouTube subtitles are really, really unreliable, like this. YouTube subtitles here say alrighty, but Chandler actually says, oh, I see, which is completely different. This can be especially frustrating when you're serious about learning real world English and you don't have a lot of time to study. This is exactly why I recommend FluentU, an app that teaches you English through authentic videos. The subtitles are always reliable because they're created by language experts. Plus, they're interactive, so if you get lost, you can click on it to see context-specific definitions, never literal translations. So if we hover over the phrase, why don't, here, we see one context-specific definition for this entire phrase, and not the two separate definitions for why and don't since that wouldn't really make sense here. We also get video examples that demonstrate how the word is used in all different contexts. Uh, why don't you move that coat rack? The app offers thousands of videos like movie scenes, TED Talks, and music videos, as well as personalized quizzes and speaking questions, so you actually practice what you learn. If you're serious about gaining English fluency, you can try it all for free by signing up for a two-week trial using the link in the description below. Plus, FluentU is currently having a sale, so now is a great time to check it out. Oh, I see. I thought you just really, really liked your new couch. <laughs> you know, just, just follow my lead. The key words here are follow and lead. Follow means to go or come after someone, while lead refers to the person who is guiding or showing the way. So when you put them together, follow my lead is a phrase used when someone wants you to watch and copy what they are doing or to follow their instructions. For instance, if you ask someone to dance, you can say, follow my lead. This is a little different than follow me, which literally means you want them to travel behind you or come after you. For instance, if you're driving to the beach, you might say, follow me to your friend who's driving behind you. Okay. Come on, Charlie. Oh. Ah. All right, okay. There we go. All right. means to change direction or move in a circular motion, like turn to the right. Ross keeps repeating turn to make sure Chandler and Rachel continue the action. Any more means that they have reached their limit or cannot continue doing something. For instance, I can't do this anymore. When Chandler says, I don't think we can turn anymore, it means they have reached a point where they can't keep turning the couch. He's trying to be funny here because it's very obvious that he can no longer turn the couch. Just don't think it's gonna yeah, well, come on, up, 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 up. Fit is a verb that means to be the right size or shape for something. For instance, you try on clothes in a store to see if they fit before you buy them. So when Rachel says, I just don't think it's gonna fit, she believes the couch won't be able to make it into that space. The size of the couch is too big. In everyday English, you might hear people use phrases like this when they're trying to put something in a bag, a box, or in their car. For instance, 
Do you think this box will fit? Fit can also be an adjective that describes a person that is athletic or in shape. For instance, Messi is very fit. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos like learning English with Eminem. Just don't think it's gonna fit! Oh yeah, Will, come on, up, 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 up! <laughs> yes! Oh. Here we go, pivot! 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 Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! When someone says pivot, they want you to turn or rotate, especially when moving something heavy or large. For instance, can you pivot the table a little? But it can also be used to describe a change in direction or focus, both literally and figuratively. For example, if a friend is telling you a story and suddenly changes the topic, you could jokingly say, wow, that was quite a pivot. This is also used quite a bit in business English to completely change the way in which one does something. For instance, let's pivot to the new cloud system. This friend scene has become iconic and is often quoted by fans of the show. If you hear someone shouting pivot, especially while moving furniture, they're probably referencing this scene. Okay, I, I don't think it's gonna pivot anymore. You think? <laughs> you think? Is a casual and friendly way to ask someone if they really believe what they just said or if they agree with something. It's like saying, do you really think so? Or is that what you believe? For example, if someone says that movie was really funny, you might respond with, you think? To see if they genuinely thought it was funny or if they're just saying that to be nice. This can also be used in a sarcastic manner, depending on the tone of the voice, to show that you disagree with the other person's opinion or as a response to when someone says something very obvious. For instance, California is the best state, you think? Meaning they're not sure they agree with that statement. In this clip, Rachel and Chandler are saying it in a sarcastic manner because it's very obvious that the couch will not fit up the stairs. You think? <laughs> it's important to note that it may not be appropriate to use in formal situations or with someone you don't know very well. All right, let's, uh, let's bring it back down and, and try again. Okay. When you try to do something, you make an effort or attempt to do that thing. And again means one more time or another time. So when you put them together, try again is used as a friendly encouragement for someone to make another attempt at something they weren't able to do at first. This phrase is often used in casual conversations when you want to motivate someone to not give up and keep trying. For instance, if you failed your driver's test, the instructor might tell you to try again in a few weeks. Or in this case, let's bring the couch back down and try bringing it up again. Come on guys, you can do this. If you want to make sure you remember all these fun expressions and vocabulary words, make sure to download our free PDF review guide using the link in the description. All right, let's, uh, let's bring it back down and, and try again. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think it's really stuck now. The literal definition for the adjective stuck is when something or someone cannot move. Like, this ring is stuck on my finger. But it can also be used when someone finds themselves in a difficult situation and is unsure of how to continue or solve the problem. For example, I'm stuck on this math problem. So in this scene, when Chandler says, it's really stuck now, he means that the couch is firmly fixed in place and cannot be easily removed or moved. I can't believe that didn't work. I know, me neither. I mean, you had a sketch. <laughs> Work is a verb that means to be successful or effective. For instance, my TV works great. When someone says that didn't work, it's a casual way of saying that something was not successful or effective. Ross is talking about how his plan did not achieve the desired result. Me neither is a negative form of me too that is commonly used in informal conversations. So Rachel says me neither here because she's agreeing with Ross that she can't believe it didn't work, but she's being a little sarcastic here and Ross is being serious. In some languages, it's common to say me too for both positive and negative statements, but in English, me too is only for positive statements while me neither is for negative statements. For instance, I love pizza, me too. I don't like pizza, me neither. 
But remember, in more formal settings, you might want to say, nor do I, or neither do I instead. What did you mean when you said pivot? <laughs> so when someone says, you know what? In a conversation, they're usually trying to grab the listener's attention and introduce a new idea or thought. It's like saying, hey, I just had an interesting thought or idea and I want to share it with you. It's often used to change the topic or bring up something new and exciting. Another way to say you know what is guess what. For instance, guess what I'm doing this weekend? In this clip, Chandler is saying you know what to get Ross's attention to ask him a question. So next time you're in a conversation and want to introduce a new idea or change the topic, try using you know what to make it more casual and engaging. Now let's test your knowledge and watch the clip without subtitles. <clears throat> I brought reinforcements. Oh, great. What, you brought Joey? Well, I brought the next best thing. <laughs> yeah. Chandler, you brought Chandler? The next best thing would be Monica. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be offended, but Monica is freakishly strong, so. <laughs> Look, I, I drew a sketch of how we're going to do it, OK? Rach, that's you. That's the couch. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh what's, what's that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Certainly think a lot of yourself. <laughs> oh, that's that's my arm. <laughs> oh, I see. I thought you just really, really liked your new couch. <laughs> you know, just just follow my lead. Okay. Come on, Chandler. Oh. Ah. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. Well, come on, up, 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 up. <laughs> yes. Oh. Here we go. Pivot. 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 Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> okay, I, I don't think it's going to pivot anymore. You think? Let's, uh, let's bring it back down and, and try again. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think it's really stuck now. I can't believe that didn't work. I know, me neither. I mean, you had a sketch. <laughs> oh, now, what did you mean when you said pivot? Surprisingly, this isn't the first time Ross and Rachel fight over a piece of Ross's furniture. Check out this next hilarious clip where Ross gets an apothecary table and Rachel is not happy about it because of a surprising reason. And of course, we'll learn some useful English words and phrases along the way. I'll see you over there.